Welcome back Guardians. During this season, the Vanguard have reluctantly agreed to Imara's demands in order to revive Savathun and discover how to follow the Witness through the portal. While everyone is hesitant to revive Savathun, Kaido has grounds for the greatest objection, or at least she should, because of what happened to the Cabal homeworld. But I'm not sure that Kaido even knows of Savathun's involvement with the destruction of their home planet. So that's what we are talking about today, the fall of Torah battle, Savathun and Kaido. Let's begin. At the end of Season of the Deep, Asa revealed that we need a Savathun to figure out how to enter the portal leading into the Traveler. Considering Savathun is dead, we had to negotiate with Imaru, her ghost. Imaru had already been provided with instructions from Savathun prior to her death in the case of this exact scenario. Yeah, Savathun had already predicted her death and had a negotiation strategy for her revival. Exactly what we should expect from the God of Cunning. The deal is we have to defeat Zeverath before Imaru will agree to revive Savathun and we can get the information we need about the portal. So, how will Kaito react to an alliance with Savathun and by extension the Hive, considering the Hive caused the destruction of the Cabal home planet, Torabattle? In the lore tab of the Seasonal Sparrow, Acre Amatus, we see Akora telling Kaito about the course of action the Vanguard have decided to follow. Take a listen. Akora took a deep breath to compose herself. She had been dreading the conversation she was about to initiate. She ran through all the anticipated objections and corresponding de-escalation tactics in her mind. It was important to keep the situation in hand at any cost. Once she had stilled herself, she nodded to her ghost, Ophiuchus, who engaged the hollow projector. A moment later, the bust of Empress Kaito illuminated Akora's office. Even translucent and digitized, the Empress was an imposing figure. With a steady voice and unwavering gaze, Akora detailed the Vanguard's plan to resurrect Savathun in exchange for the knowledge of how to breach the Witness's portal. Once she finished, Akora braced for the Empress's fury. Instead, she was met with a pensive silence. When Kaido finally spoke, her tone was measured. There was a time, not so long ago, when the Witch Queen's resurrection would have seemed like a betrayal. Akora held her breath. But after working with Eris aboard the Leviathan, after speaking with Gol, the Empress lowered and shook her tusks, a gesture of uncertainty. I must accept that the ways of light and dark are beyond my reckoning. Kaito raised her tusks once again and hardened her voice. I trust Eris Morn as I would my own Mythkeeper. If the Vanguard agrees that this is the only way to stop the Witness, then so be it. My legions will not stand in your way. My thanks, Empress, Akora replied with obvious relief. Besides, the Empress concluded, if this plan brings me one step closer to crushing Zeverath's skull, then it has my blessing. At first glance, it seems that this conversation has gone well, and it has. However, I do wonder if Kaido is not aware of Savathun's involvement with the fall of Torah Battle, information that could completely change her stance on the issue. At this stage, she agrees because she trusts Eris Morn and she wants to see Zevi Arath destroyed. Zevi was the Hive God to invade the Cabal homeworld, however, the Hive God responsible for summoning Zevi there in the first place was Savathun. So now, let's cover the fall of Torah Battle and Savathun's role in all of this. To understand as much as we can, we need to look into the story of Uman Arath, the Primus of all legions, a member of the Midnight Coup, and perhaps the closest thing Kaido had to a real parent. Uman Arath is first and most thoroughly introduced to us in the Destiny 2 Collector's Edition Cabal booklet. This booklet included an entry titled The General, Evocative General Uman Arath, Primus of all legions which introduced her from Kallus' perspective after he'd been overthrown. The booklet is a list of those who betrayed him. It goes as follows. My dear companion, let me confess to this. To know true joy, one must also experience true sorrow. I am sorry for Uman Arath, the worst mistake I ever made. In ages past, the Emperor ruled alongside the Praetorate, the degenerate and venal military aristocracy. The legions made an iron wall around them, and the people suffered so the legions could grow. I cast down the Praetorate, I gave the legions the right to speak as citizens, but I still needed armies, and armies need a leader, so I chose a combat veteran to serve as advocate general. I thought I could show Umen the great works and delights of our cabal, and thus teach her that war is only a way of protecting happiness. But she would say to me, the war is all there is, all this. The crowds, the triumphal architecture, the gardens in the sky, 
everything I'd built, this is just logistical support. I watched her, I wasn't a fool, but when at last she betrayed me, she acted through a simple console and his protege, damnation upon the name of Gaul. Umana Wrath would consign my people to an eternity of fear and strife, she would pillage and tax my people in the name of their protection, and yet it would be the soldiers that she protects. Umana Wrath must die. Her flagship's hull is adamant, her weapons crack planets, and she stands ever vigilant. For Uman sees terror all around her, machines who can eat her worlds, barbarians who corrode her frontiers, wizards who thirst for her soul, and worse. Uman is afraid of the outside, see that her doom comes from within. Umanarath almost presents as slightly paranoid, obsessed with those who could harm the Cabal Empire, and this would eventually lead to her corruption. The capture of a Hive Thrall led to an obsession with the Hive, and eventually an opening for Savathun to corrupt her mind. Following the Midnight Coup and the removal of Kallus from the throne, Kaido will receive disturbing reports about Umanarath's activities in her private quarters, and go to investigate. What she found there would lead to Kaido removing Uman from her council. Take a listen to the entry, Soldiers from the same law book. But one day, a general came to her with a clear complaint. The stench from Umanarath's rooms permeates the entire east wing of the palace. My lovers choke on toxic fumes simply walking through the halls. Surprised she hadn't heard about it before, Kaido dismissed him with a promise to investigate the Evocate General's chambers. Later that day, she found that the first of Uman's rooms, usually kept tidy with military precision, was changed. Her two war tables were covered in papers and tomes unrecognizable to Kaido. The room stank of death and poison, strange symbols were drawn on the ground in ash. In the far corner of the room, with the restraints they used for captives aboard their prison ships, a living hive thrall was held in suspension, drooling and chattering. Uman, Kaido said, astonished, what's happening here? Uman turned from one of her war tables where she studied a book that looked to be bound with mottled flesh. Princess, she said, pleased. Good, I thought to call you, but I've been so engrossed. Come see the future of the Cabal army. Kartal approached, intent on looking at Uman instead of the thrall. They don't fear pain, Uman said. Perverse admiration crept into her voice. They don't fear death. Soldiers who don't know pain or fear are useless, Kartal said, eyeing the Evocate General. It is the knowledge of death and the will to defy it that together breed bravery. You taught me those texts. We must move beyond them, Uman muttered, watching the thrall tilt its grotesque face in response to their voices. With each swing of the sword, the universe grows smaller, Kaido, the competition fiercer. If we don't learn a new way, we'll be cut down with the rest. Her voice went quiet. We must accept new gods or we will perish. The thrall began to thrash, sudden and violent. Kato watched. I'm ordering you to step down from the council, she said after a long silence. Here we see Kato would choose to respond to Uman's fanaticism by removing her from a position of power, but unfortunately this would not be enough. In the next entry of the law book, we would see Uman be corrupted and doom the Cabal homeworld forever. The law book also includes dialogue from Savathun, revealing that she had orchestrated Uman's descent into madness. Take a listen to the entry, New Gods, from the Empress Law Book. It was Torin, one of Kaido's advisors, that alerted her to the spectacle. In the square, she said, her deep voice laced with concern, I've never seen anything like it. Kaido went immediately. In the center square of Toro Battle's weaponsmith district, a bright green flame licked the air. Umanarath stood against the blaze, naked before a waist wrap, in the custody of two guards. Her hide was carved with strange crude symbols. When she saw Kaido arrive, she threw her head back and laughed. Here comes a Princess Imperial, she said, to kneel before our new god. I am Savathun's whispering. Kaido strode forward. Let her go, she told the guards. Reluctant, they did as she asked. What god, Uman? What heresies have you invented now? Uman grinned. The god of war, she said, and the earth trembled beneath them. But the god of war has planted her armies elsewhere. It is her sister smiling that has taken the ear of the war child Uman Arath. Kaido stood before Uman in the flickering green light of the fire. Your obsession is a weakness, she said, and a threat to our prosperity. You can't stop it now, Uman lilted, breathless with delight. Zivirath, hear me. Kaido didn't break her stare. I have no choice but to. 
Umin chuckling raised her hands. They glowed. The fire behind her burned higher and chattered like rattling bones. The war is all there is, she said. As the chattering reached a fevered pitch, Cottle made a decision. With the lightning quick reflexes Umin had taught her, she unsheathed the ceremonial sword at her side and ran it through Umin's middle. Umin laughed. You are war and I conjure you with war and blood. She laughed and laughed and laughed until her mouth began to ooze until Cuddle, disgusted, pushed her off the sword with her foot. The body tumbled back onto the green blaze. A gift for my favorite sister. As the fire consumed the corpse, a gargantuan portal opened in the sky. And so Cuddle's actions, ending Uman Arath, was actually the thing to summon Zivu Arath, conjured with war and blood. But as you can see, Savathun orchestrated these events. Kaido would later lose to Zivu's forces, have to gather her troops and what remained of her empire and flee. Eventually we would encounter the Cabal and form an alliance with Kaido. So I'm not aware of any law that confirms that Kaido knows that Savathun was the one to actually orchestrate the fall of Torah battle. In fact, I don't even know who knows this truth. The only time it's said out loud is in the Ghost of the Deep Dungeon, where Zivri talks about her sister's gift and how she destroyed Torah Battle. So maybe the Guardian knows? Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be the one to tell Kaido. Honestly, I kind of would love a showdown between Kaido and Savathun, of course, once we have the information we need. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 Law episode. If you'd like to support the channel, you can leave a comment, you leave the word Kaido down below. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.